While everyone is familiar with classics from the big three, only true gearheads are aware of these hidden gems from the golden age of Detroit muscle. In today's video, we're gonna count down the top 15 forgotten American muscle cars. Hit that subscribe button and let's dive in. Number 15, 1949, Oldsmobile Rocket 88. Everyone knows that the muscle car was invented when Pontiac had the vision to stuff a powerful engine into a Le Mans and call it a GTO in 1964. Except that's not true. The 64 GOAT started the muscle car trend as well as the arms race to build faster and crazier rides. But muscle cars existed long before. The 1949 Oldsmobile Rocket is credited as the first muscle car in history. Long before Pontiac had the idea of putting big engines in smaller cars, Oldsmobile put the big 304 Ci V8 from the 98 full-size sedans into their smaller 78 coupes, creating the Rocket 88. This genius move is said to have ushered in the era of V8 high-performance cars. The Olds Rocket 88 dominated NASCAR from 1949 through 1952, when the other automakers finally woke up to the idea of factory muscle. Nineteen fifty five Chrysler C three hundred. Originally, muscle cars were called supercars, mostly because they had extraordinary capabilities normal cars lacked. One of the first vehicular Avengers to show off its heroics was the nineteen fifty five Chrysler C three hundred. The two door hardtop was equipped with a three hundred horsepower Hemi V eight and fitted with two four barrel carbs, with the express purpose of meeting homologation requirements to kick ass in NASCAR. Back in those days, NASCAR was truly a stock car racing circuit in that the competing cars were the same vehicles anyone could walk into a dealership and buy. They had an old saying, win on Sunday, sell on Monday, because everyone wanted to own a Daytona winner. Chrysler brought the 300 back in 2004 as a luxury sedan, but almost nobody connects that to the first supercar C-Series. nineteen fifty six Studebaker Golden Hawk. Before its demise, Studebaker was known for making clunky but affordable alternatives to the popular luxury vehicle of the time. Then, in nineteen fifty six, they made a radical departure and created the Golden Hawk, which is a pretty great name for a superhero supercar. It was the coolest looking thing the company ever created and easily the fastest. With performance to rival the Chrysler Letter Series three hundred S, the Golden Hawk was substantially cheaper. The 275 horsepower V8 in the relatively light car gave it an awesome power to weight ratio that allowed it to smoke the Ford Thunderbird, as well as the Chevrolet Corvette in both 0 to 60 mile per hour times and the quarter mile. nineteen fifty seven AMC Rambler Rebel. In the late nineteen fifties, there were enormous full size luxury cars and budget compacts, but AMC had the brilliant idea of building something in between. The result was the mid size Rambler Rebel, which wouldn't have much to do with this list, but the automaker also threw in a standard three hundred twenty seven CIV eight, in turn creating the first muscle car that wasn't a land yacht as well. Since one of the defining characteristics of a muscle car is being mid size, the Rambler Rebel could lay claim to being the first real one, but it also had four doors, which is two, too many. Then again, the rebooted Charger is a four-door, and nobody has a problem calling an SRT Hellcat Redeye Widebody a muscle car, so maybe the AMC qualifies as well. nineteen sixty three Chevrolet Impala Sport Coupe Z eleven. Nobody has forgotten about the Impala as Chevrolet made, according to Auto Week, around one million cars per model year. From nineteen fifty seven and sporadically till two thousand, 
That equals roughly 30 million Impalas from the factory. As the number one choice for lowriders and later as a weird sedan, this is a car people know. But many may not realize that for one glorious year, it was a serious muscle car. Chevy introduced the SS package for the Impala in 1961, which was mostly an appearance trim, but in 1963 only came up with the Z11 that was equipped with a special race-tuned 427. Designed entirely for drag racing and the NASCAR circuit, Chevy only produced 57 of these amazing cars. In addition to packing some serious horsepower, Chevy replaced many of the car's steel parts with aluminum, making it over 300 pounds lighter than a standard Impala. Number 10, the 1963 Dodge 440. An amazing muscle car like the Dodge 440 has remained obscure, mostly because it's hard to figure out what it is. Was it a Dart, a Polaris, or something else entirely different? The answer to all of those questions is yes, sort of. In 1962, the top trim for the then mid-sized Dart was the 440, but in 1963, the Dart was shrunk into a compact. What the Dart used to be then became Dodge's mid-sized car, and for 63 and 64, known as simply the 440, before it morphed into the Polaris. Though it came optional with a 440 CI engine, the name of the vehicle wasn't based on the power plant. The 440 could have everything from a 318 to a 426 max wedge under the hood. With the latter, the Dodge 440 was one of the fastest muscle cars ever made. nineteen sixty four Ford Fairlane Thunderbolt. Since factory drag cars were all the rage in the early nineteen sixties, Ford didn't want to feel left out, so they took the four twenty seven intended for the heavy galaxy and threw it in the much lighter Fairlane. The nineteen sixty four Fairlane Thunderbolt was exactly what it was intended to be. A dominant drag racer that blew the doors off the competition in the NHRA Superstock class, delivering a championship for Ford. The reason why the Thunderbolt was such a monster was because of something else that was trendy at the time, underrating engine horsepower. The Ford's 427 was rated at 425 horsepower, but more than likely was cranking out upwards of 600 ponies. According to Hemmings, only 100 Thunderbolts were ever built with 49 four speeds, making it extremely rare. Nineteen sixty four Mercury Comet Cyclone GT. Mercury isn't the first brand that comes to mind when most people think about muscle cars, even though they did build some cool ones. Even cars like the Cougar, which most folks know about, were overshadowed by the more popular Ford Mustang and Torino. For one shining moment, however, in nineteen sixty four, the Mercury Comet Cyclone GT was the fastest thing in the entire Ford Lincoln and Mercury family. The Comet Cyclones were built on the same platform as the Ford Fairlane but were much lighter, and thus faster. In 64, Mercury dropped some 427s into around 50 cars for the sole purpose of winning. While the Fairlane Thunderbolt competed in superstock drag racing, the Comet Cyclones were in the factory experimental class, which is the anarchy division with no rules. Wild Bill Shrewsbury, of Hemi Underglass and Batmobile fame, raced and dominated the AFX class in a 64 Comet Cyclone. 1965, Pontiac 2 plus 2. While the GTO was stealing all the thunder, Pontiac quietly made another kick-ass muscle car in the mid-60s with the 2 plus 2. GTO sounds way cooler than some kindergarten math, but the 2 plus 2 was more powerful. The GTO 325 horsepower 389 was dwarfed by the 1965 2 plus 2's 376 horsepower 421 engine, and Pontiac advertised the car as the GOAT's big brother. There are a lot of sites that report the 2 plus 2 could hit 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds. But that was a heavily modded version. 
The 2 plus 2 started as a trim option on the Catalina in 1964, but by 1965 became its model, before reverting to a trim in 1967 when it was promptly discontinued. Despite being a sharp-looking performance ride, the 2 plus 2 didn't sell well, as Haggerty reported. Less than 28,000 units were sold in four model years, noting, even at a Pontiac gathering, it's a rarity. Oh man, it feels, feels really strong, feels good. 1966 Plymouth Belvedere Satellite The 1966 Plymouth Belvedere Satellite is another great Mopar that is underappreciated because of its confusing lineage. Everybody remembers the GTX as well as the Roadrunner that it eventually became, but most forget both of those awesome muscle cars started as Belvedere's. In 1965, when the Plymouth Fury became the automaker's top full-size model, the Belvedere was shifted to a mid-size. The top trim for the Belvedere was the Satellite, and in 1966, the 426 Street Hemi option was added. The car was badass enough that Richard Petty won the 66 Daytona 501. Then, in 1967, Petty crushed the competition with 18 poles, 27 wins, and 40 top 10 finishes en route to the NASCAR Cup Series champion. Not many cars have that kind of street cred, and it's kind of weird how forgotten the Belvedere satellite has become. Nineteen sixty-eight AMC Javelin. AMC was the fourth car maker in the U.S., making performance and muscle cars alongside Ford, Chrysler, and GM. The company went defunct in nineteen eighty-eight, but before that, some interesting models came out. One of the more successful models from the late nineteen sixties was the AMC Javelin, which was the company's answer to the likes of the Camaro, Mustang, and Challenger. The Javelin had the advantage in weight as it tipped the scales at just two thousand eight hundred thirty-six pounds or 1,286 kilograms. And yes, we are talking about the road-going variant. The most popular version was the AMC Javelin Trans Am, a homologation special of which 100 examples were built, each with a special red, white, and blue tricolor scheme. The Go package was optional for the Javelin, and it replaced the base, 290 cubic inch V8 with a 390 unit, not available even on the race cars, due to a 305 cubic inch restriction. Nineteen sixty six Chevrolet Corvair Yenko Stinger. It may sound strange to some, but the Porsche nine eleven was not the first rear engine sports car to feature an air cooled flat six engine. While it is debatable whether the Corvair should be classified as a muscle car, it was affordable and fast, even without a thundering V eight powering it. The rear mounted engine, combined with a rear swing axle, resulted in sketchy handling, arguably even worse than on early Porsche nine hundred eleven models. The car was subjected to scrutiny and was even the subject of Ralph Nader's 1965 book, Unsafe at Any Speed. However, in 1972, his accusations were proven false. Despite its tarnished reputation, the second-generation Corvair still sold relatively well, and even Jay Leno has Corvair Corsa. But the car came to its best when a known Chevy partner, Don Yanko, got his hands on 100 examples. All 100 Yanko Stingers featured modified engines with up to 240 horsepower, heavy-duty suspension, four-speed manual transmission, quick steering rack, and limited slip differentials were part of the treatment. Apparently, Yenko Corvairs were sold through the Copo program. Nineteen sixty three Studebaker Lark. Studebaker is not a brand you, straight up, associate with American muscle cars, but it did have some great hits between the late nineteen fifties and late nineteen sixties. The Studebaker Lark was one of the more underappreciated performers of the time. Its humble, boxy appearance is to blame as the traditional three box design gave no hint of the car's performance. Under the hood, the Lark relied on a two eighty nine engine, which some believe to be the Ford two eighty nine V eight. In reality, it's Studebaker's engine, which was built by copying Cadillac's new 1949 design, 
featuring compact wedge head combustion chambers, oversized valves, and port size hydraulic valve lifters and overhead valves. There would be three power levels, dubbed R1, R2, and R3, two of which feature a Paxton supercharger. This made the Studebaker Lark a classic sleeper that could embarrass some of the top names in the muscle car segment. Number 2. 1970 Chevrolet Monte Carlo When we talk about GM's muscle cars, fans consider the Chevrolet Chevelle to be the ultimate. However, its bigger, more luxurious counterpart, the Monte Carlo, is not to be slept on as it packs the same potent V8 engines, including the venerable 454 Big Block, which sat at the top of the range. The Monte Carlo was underpinned by the G-body platform, which was essentially a modified A-body platform with a stretched front section. Engine options ranged from a 350 cubic inch small block to the mighty SS454 big block, also found in the Chevy Chevelle. The Monte Carlo rose in popularity after making an appearance as the main character's first car in the 2006 Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, where it perfectly depicted a sleeper car. Number 1. The 1968 AMC AMX The AMC AMX was based on the Javelin we mentioned earlier, but was shortened by 12 inches. As a result, the AMX was a two-seater only, as opposed to the Javelin's 2 plus 2 layout. The AMX was for the Javelin what the short wheelbase Audi Quattro was for the regular model or what the Mustang Boss 302 was for the regular Mustang. AMX stood for American Motors Experimental. The short wheelbase model was as bare-bone as a road-going model can get, featuring little to no options. The 290 and 390 engine options were carried over from the regular size Javelin, as were the transmission options. The shortened chassis and removed weight made the AMX a very nimble and quick car, able to run with Corvettes of the time. With the 4 to 44 rear gears, the AMX needed a little over 4 seconds to reach 60 mph, making it one of the quickest 0 to 60 muscle cars out of the box. 